Hi class, we're going to work on our first prototype, the apple picker. I'm going to choose a new project here. In this project, we're going to be working with dropping some items or apples from our apple tree and catching them in a basket. So in my projects folder, I'm going to create prototype one. As you're working with Unity, you can try some of the asset packages. Remember, they do increase the size of your project, but they can give you lots of capabilities. As our Apple Picker gets created, we're going to first save our scene. And we're going to use underscore scene underscore zero. going to create some C-sharp scripts. Our first one is going to be Apple Picker. Our second will be Apple. Third will be apple tree. We're creating one for each of our objects. And lastly, basket, our object that will catch the apples. So we just like the good object oriented programmers that we are. We've created a different class for each of our primary objects in our game. The Apple Picker script is the one that we need to associate with our main camera. So I will click on our main camera. Actually, I can just drag our Apple Picker onto our main camera. And then I'm going to close this services window so that I can see our inspector. Our main camera verify that my apple picker script was indeed associated with the main camera object. Remember, if I click on the main camera object, I'm going to drag that um, apple picker script over here into the inspector pane to let it create that association. So we're getting all situated here, and as a prototype, we don't need a huge amount of art, but we're so we're going to kind of create what's known as programmer art, where we're really just creating a placeholder for the art that may come along eventually. First of all, for our apple tree, we're going to create a cylinder to use as the trunk. So, sorry about that, I'm going to create a 3D object and a cylinder. My transform settings I'm going to have it just like this, all zeros and all ones. Looks good. Next, we're going to use a sphere for the top of the tree.
and we need it to set its transform. And I'm just going to use, I'm being given here for our position, we're going to have 0, then 0.5, then 0. And for our rotation, we're going to have all zeros. And for our scale, we're going to do 3, 2, and 3. And you should see our sphere turning into a bit of a tree down here. Now, because we would like these to become one object, we're going to create a, an empty game object to hold the two of them. So I'm going to choose game object create empty. We'll call this apple tree. Try to make our apple tree and we'll stop this thing. I don't want to move it too much, right? Okay. Alright, so there's our apple tree. So um we've got it all set. For our apple tree, let's make sure we're in the right position here. We would like to have our scale to be just a bit larger, so we're going to make it to two, two. Now we have a bit bigger of an apple tree. We're going to create some really simple materials for our apple tree. So we're going to create a material. This material we're going to call MAT underscore wood for the wood of our tree. So let's pick up a nice brown. That seems okay. Alright. And then drag the material wood onto the trunk of our tree. Let's go ahead and rename that to this will be trunk. And we're going to call this for um, tree top. There we go. Now we have our trunk a nice brown color and Let's create another material. This one will be material underscore leaves. And let's find a nice green for that. Trees coming together like it being an artist here. Okay, so now we have our apple tree and we're going to drag it from the hierarchy pane over to the project pane to make it into a prefab, just like we did last time. Now we have a prefab for our apple tree. Let's go ahead and add some light to our scene. So we're going to create a directional light. And we're going to set our transform positions for our light to be 0, 
10, 0, and then 50 minus 30 and 0. So it looks like we got some good defaults there and all ones. Now that's what gives us a nice light and kind of pretty tree on our scene. And you could try working with some of those different lighting parameters. But for now, we're in a pretty good situation with our directional light. Um, let's move the apple tree up and out of the way a little bit. Select it in our hierarchy. And since let's go ahead and move it to a Y coordinate of 4. So it's kind of up in the air there for us. Now, this kind of moves it out of the view of the scene for us, but we can zoom out to see it if we need to. And you can use your wheel mouse to scroll, and that'll help you while the cursor is over the scene. Now that we have the apple tree, we need to make the apple game object prefab that we're going to drop from our tree. So from the menu, let's do, choose game object, and we want to create a sphere. Now this sphere, let's um, rename it to Apple. And let's change its transform a little bit. We want it to be zero, zero, zero. And zero, 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 and one, one, one. So that looks pretty good. Now let's create a new material for that. It's going to be MAT underscore Apple. And I'm going to make my apples, I guess, a nice, a nice shiny red. But you could make yours green if you want to green apples more. But you might have to change your leaf color a little bit. So we want to make that nice shiny red. I think I want it to be super shiny. Can I make it a little bit more so? Or it's kind of like a, like a Christmas tree ball. That's what I want. Okay, so I'm going to make that be my apple material. And Let's go ahead and make our apple be affected by physics. So we're going to select our apple object and add a component of a rigid body. Remember, that's going to make the object be aware of gravity and sort of fall and collide with the other objects. Now, as we're working with our apple, notice up here in the inspector we have this tag option. We're going to tag our apples. So we're going to add a tag and we're going to name these apples. Just a single apple. Alright, that's a new tag that we have. So I'm getting everything all set so that I can identify all of the apples in the scene. So if we have apples dropping, we'll be able to tell that they're falling down and what they are. Now we're going to drag our apple from the hierarchy pane onto the project pane to make it into a prefab. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and delete our Apple instance in the hierarchy pane because we're going to create all of our apples ourselves in our scene. So I'll delete that there and make sure I still have it over here as a prefab. 
looks like pretty good. I like my apple. Now let's go ahead and create our basket. So the basket is going to be pretty easy. I want it to be a cube. And I'm going to name it basket. Then my basket, my transform settings are going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and my scale is going to be 4, 1, 4. Let's see what it's going to be kind of like a basket. So let's change in the geometry of that item. It should give us a nice flat, wide rectangle. Now we want to create a material for that. And I'm going to make that material a little bit lighter of a brown. Let's see what I can do here. And then maybe I can make it have kind of a that color there. Baskety. Okay. Take my basket material and apply it to my basket. Looks great. Now we have our basket, we have our tree, and we have our apples. So I think we're getting there. Getting pretty good. When we're working with any sort of scene, one of the most important things for us to get right is our camera and our camera position. And for our apple picker, picker <laughs> we want a camera that will show a decent sized play area because our gameplay is two dimensional really. We want an orthographic camera instead of a perspective one. So you can do a, some research there on the difference between the two. But basically the perspective camera gives us a nice wide triangle view from the camera and the orthographic gives us sort of a, a tunnel view, basically um, a pane. So let's change our camera. Right now it's perspective. I'm gonna change it to orthographic. I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I see the camera size here. I'm going to set it to 16. And it makes the apple tree appear to be a good size and leaves room for the apples to fall and be caught by the player. Now, sometimes you'll make a first good guess at things like the camera setting. And then sometimes you'll have to refine them as you're playing with the game. So it's always an iterative process to finding the right settings. Um, in our text, we're pretty close to what they recommend. So I'm going to leave everything like that. And I'm going to try running my scene. I should see my floating apple tree because I haven't repositioned it. But I kind of want to see what sort of camera view I'm looking at. Pretty far away. Looks good. Everything's working there a bit. Okay. Now we're about ready to start doing our code, so I'm going to stop this video at this point and save everything that we've done so far. Save our project. I should have picked Save Project. And we'll be back in a little while to pick up where we left off and code this thing. So.